Welcome. So what I have here is y equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. And what we're going to do is show you how to solve this by factoring. Now, when looking at a problem like this, we always want to see, can we factor out a common factor, um, especially to get our a equals 1, because factoring is a lot easier when our a is equal to 1. However, when we look at this, um, we see that none of, I cannot, all the terms do not share a common factor, so there's nothing I can factor out. Um, so to factor this, or actually to solve by factoring, first thing we want to know is, remember, we're going to set this equal to 0, because we want to find the values of x that are going to make this equation true when our output values are equal to 0. But we're going to use the box method, which is going to represent our expression as an area. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to rewrite this from standard form to intercept form, meaning we're going to have to want to write it as a product of our two factors so we can apply the zero product property. So when I write this as an area, I have 3x squared here, and I'll have negative 5 here. But I only have three terms here, so we're going to want to break up negative 2x into two separate boxes to represent our area. So to do this, we have to go back to our little x that we had. Now before, when we did the x, we had a, we had c and b. And then when we found our values for that multiply to give us c and add to give us b, those are our two factors, p and q. But now we have an absolute value of a that's greater than 1. So it's not going to be the case. These are not going to be our p and our q. But we're still going to use them, and it's important for us to figure them out. So I did a times c, which is negative 15, and our b, which is negative 2. So now I need to value, find out which two values multiply to give me negative 15, but add to give me negative 2. Now notice, since I'm multiplying to give me negative 15, one of my factors has to be negative. And since they're adding to give me a negative number, we know the larger number has to be negative. So that means it has to be negative 15 times 1, negative 5 times 3, and that's it. So out of these two, which one gives us negative 2? Well, it's going to be negative 5 and negative 3, right? Ding, 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 ding. So, what do we do with these two values? So negative 5 and positive 3. Well, we're going to represent these two values inside of part of our area. And what I want you to understand, that's a positive 3. And it doesn't matter which box you put them in there. But these boxes, remember, this is the area. This represents this expression. So if I put, add x's to these, you can say that negative 5x plus 3x gives us negative 2x. So this is the same as this. But all I'm doing, I'm using a visual representation of my expression as an area of a box. And I'm doing that because I want to find the factor. So to do that, we're going to factor, what we're going to do is we're going to find the side lengths of our box. And that's just a visual representation to be able to find out what two values or what two factors multiply to give us this. And when you're multiplying, you're finding an area. All right? So, we need to figure out what are going to be the side lengths of our box. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one box at a time. So let's do the top box, 3x squared. Well, 3x squared, there's only really two options we have. We could have 3x times x, right? Or we could have 3x and x. But the main important thing is whatever side length we pick for each side, that side length has to also factor into the other or, fact, or have a factor that you can multiply to get the other box. And we want to use even integers. We can go to fractions. But that's getting a little bit more complicated than we want to get. So we know that x times um, 3x gives us 3x squared. And we could say x times, uh, x times 3 gives us 3x. However, when I go over here, 3x times uh, x gives us 3x squared. But 3x times not an even integer is going to give us negative 5x. So we're not going to want to use that way. But let's, how about we wrote it like this. So x times 3x still gives us 3x squared. Now, 3x times what gives us 3x? Well, that's 1. x times 3x gives us 3x squared. And x times negative 5 gives us negative 5x. Then we can double check our solution by saying negative 5 times 1 gives us negative 5. So now we're all good. Now we found our two side lengths that multiply to give us our area. Or what we did is we rewrote our area as a product of its side lengths or its factors. So now I can apply this. Um, now I can rewrite this expression in its factored form, 3x minus 5 times x plus 1. And now that I've rewrote it in the factored form, I can apply the zero product property. Zero product property allows me to now write each expression equal to 1. Because since they're multiplying at equal to 0, we know that they have to, one of them has to equal 0. So then I solve for each one. Divide by 3, divide by 3. So therefore, my solutions, or x-intercepts, for this equation 
is going to be x equals 5 thirds or x equals negative 1. So there you go. That's the box method. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.